actually be able to hover in the air like that? I'm going to have to do it to believe it. Awesome! The idea of being able to fly by ourselves seems something of a fantasy. But today, I'm going to meet a man that has managed to do that, fly by himself. He straps a thousand horsepower to his back and reaches speeds of 85 miles per hour. Vinny. Richard, Pleased great to meet, to meet you. you. Yes, come in. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a little bit of a museum to the various prototypes we've gone through in the last three, four years. So. Incredible. It ended up being a little bit of a, uh, an evolutionary journey and actually started, dug this out, this horrible lump here. <laughs> this was the very first prototype arm assembly. That seems uh, really heavy. Yes, it's got right. lots of sharp corners and it was built in a hurry just to, yes, you can feel how heavy oh it is. Oh my goodness. It, it's weight reflects the uncertainty I had right at the beginning of just how sensible it was to have a jet engine attached to your arm. So I thought, well, let's just build it out of something really solid. So in case there's some kind of problem I haven't thought of, it's not going to hurt me. The conventional wisdom was that with a spindle spinning at 120,000 RPM, you would actually find that you couldn't move it. So like a spinning bicycle wheel, if you tried to move it, it would fight you in a perpendicular fashion. Turns out, not at all. It was really? easy, really benign. It was just a gentle, but increasable shove of the air coming out the other so end. So that sounds like lesson number one. Massively. And then rapidly went to the point, and they're stuck up on the wall up here. They are now heavily modified. Yeah. Um, I had a theory that if you put one either side of your fist, that the net result of the thrust would feel like it was going up your arm. So it now is just like you're leaning forward on a table. It's like ah. very, very effortless. There's something we should point out as well. I've talked about the arm engines, but actually a large part of the support uh, comes from the rear engine, which originally was an engine on the back of each leg. And we've got the original boots up in the corner there, which I used to use to house the engines. But they gradually moved up the legs until they were kind of on my posterior and then eventually got consolidated into one larger engine here. Um, and that provides a, a third of the lift to lift, you know, a third of your body weight and the weight of the fuel and itself. Um, so between those three points of the kind of camera tripod, that gives you the support to be able to actually manipulate and control and manoeuvre. Have you gone through a lot of mistakes and failures? You can see from some of the examples, we've had, we've had a few spills over the last oh, four yeah. years. Oh yeah, my but gosh, all, that's all, really mashed up. Yeah, I mean, but it, it's quite deliberately soft aluminium, so it looks more dramatic than it is. But yeah, you know, you have to take some degree of risk when you're breaking new ground and doing something new. That learning journey was all about actually trying things that had never been done before, but all the time, managing the downside because actually to be honest it involved falling over or, or yeah. mostly on mostly on a farmyard where we were testing it all the time only from a couple of feet there we always absolutely manage that downside risk otherwise if you can't get back up again because you've broken your legs because you've gone too high you can't keep innovating and trialing and this is your lab yep this is where we build test break things rebuild things yeah absolutely i guess one of the key features that you're concerned about is how much it weighs yeah so anything that flies has to you, there has to be a consideration of the weight that, that you're trying to lift. Especially in our case, we don't have wings with this version. We are only flying by literally throwing enough mass of air downwards fast enough to, to lift you off the ground. Actually, an important point, a lot of people think this is pushing on the ground. You know, the Newtonian physics doesn't work like that. This is simply blowing air downwards and you rising up. It, it doesn't make any difference whether you're two foot off the ground or 20 feet or 100 feet. So it's a bit like pointing a hairdryer at the floor. Yeah, even a domestic garden hose, when you turn it on, you can feel it shove you very yeah. slightly. Um, it's that same force. There's mass being thrown that way, so naturally it wants to impart the same force the other way. To understand this, we need to remember two things. One, gravity is the weakest force in the universe. The reason we stay attached to the Earth is simply because it's so big. Two, Isaac Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the action or the force exerted by the engines on Richard's body is enough to overcome the action or force of gravity, holding his body to the ground. Enough theory, time for some action. just been given these because apparently it's going to get really loud and now Richard is going to get his jet suit on. It's really exciting. <laughs> How are 
are you feeling at this stage? Have you done it so many times that it's kind of like second nature? Uh, I have no concerns about my ability to fly. I always have a healthy respect for the fallibility of uh, the technology. So that's why you don't go too high. Um, so it's always a respect for that. Yeah, no, really good. I mean, it, it's a very simple little flight, um, but uh, yeah, you see the control and stability. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you were just so stable, but you honestly looked like you were just floating on Yeah, air. that's what it feels like. You just feel like you can go anywhere you like in three-dimensional space. The idea that jet engines are allowing you to hover in the air. I get the mechanics, I get the theory. It all stacks up from an engineering point of view, but to actually be able to hover in the air like that, I'm going to have to do it to believe it. Yeah, one, one, one side and one the other. Yeah, it's lacking a bit. Yeah. Oh, does that feel pretty good? Yeah. And then, you walk down here, I'm just going to hold your arm a bit. This is probably the most dangerous part of the whole thing. It's walking down the ramp. Okay. Oh, it's heavy. Yeah, you get lighter when it starts up. So, what we're going to do, you're going to press that kill switch in. The lights will be flashing. Okay. I'm going to watch all the lights. When I say, okay, good to go, I want you to lift these up and move them down into this position. I could feel the dam of forces ramping up on my arms and the smell of jet fuel was overwhelming. At this point, I'm glad I'm attached to a harness. So clearly I need a bit more practice, but for my first attempt, it really hit home how hard it is to gain control over the engines, and they were at their lowest setting. Actual liftoff was probably gonna take a few more attempts and a lot more courage. He did it for you. <laughs> Get the weight up here, yeah? yeah. How was that? That was crazy, awesome. Huh? I'm shaking like a leaf. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's exhilaration or just terror. It, there's all these thoughts going through your mind, yeah. like, am I absolutely nuts to be doing yeah, yeah, this? Yeah, that's very common. Yeah. Plus, that. you know, when I think about the fuel and I think about the power yeah. that I've got attached to me, yeah. and it's kind of humbling because you realise that you're just you're not. They don't like they do much, fly. do they? They're little little metal tins, and yet the amount of kind of power and yeah, the noise, force, yeah, the force, yeah. and like the knowledge that a slight movement yeah. could send you spinning. What kind of technology has come out of all of this work that will affect the way we fly? 
In terms of practicality, now this would not be my chosen way to take the kids to school or pop down to the shop for a pint of milk. Uh, but then again, the first motor cars were considered noisy, smelly, inefficient and, and terrible compared to the best technology at the time, which was a horse, perfectly good horse. And look where cars have got to. We've made amazing progress in the last 150 years of getting in flight vehicles and flying around inside them. Well, this is just opening people's minds to, if we go back to basics, what do we have to add to our human form in order to actually fly a bit like we always imagined? Overloaded with science yet? If you like what you saw, then like, comment and subscribe by hitting the bell button below. Thanks for watching.